Outlaw Nation Chapter 4 After Roger finished his breakfast, he followed Buddy out into the garage. Shortly after that, Tiny and Hammer came rolling in. Tiny and Roger went into the back room together. Hammer sat at the table and made small talk with Roger. It seemed as though the two men had a lot in common. They both served in some of the same areas during their time in country in Vietnam. The dates of service even seemed to overlap, putting them both in the same place at the same time. Buddy and Tiny emerged from the back and joined the two men at the table. Buddy said to Roger, Brother, we got a small job coming up. We could use an extra man. You interested in work? I hate to even ask, you being our guest and all, but I'm kind of in a jam. This job needs to happen tonight, and I don't have a fourth man. I mean, I could use Butch, but it's really not a job for the area's top barbecue chef and bartender. Buddy, Tiny, and Hammer all chuckled. Tiny said, Yeah, plus, I don't know about you guys, but when we get back, I'll be real hungry. I'm counting on him to have some of that slow-roasted pork ready for us. Hammer looked at Tiny. Bro, when aren't you hungry? Buddy smiled and looked over at Roger. What do you say? One night's work pays well. And if all goes according to plan, you won't even have to get out of the van. Well, I suppose I could help you out. I could use the cash. And What's the job? Buddy looked at Tiny and then at Hammer. Hammer nodded. Buddy told Roger, Well, Roger, you know my vision for this club, for the area, and telling you about the job, I'm going to have to bring you into a circle of trust here. We've only known you for a short time, but I feel pretty confident that I can count on you not to violate that trust. No matter if you want in or not. Roger looked Buddy in the eye. Whatever you tell me won't leave this table, bro. You can trust that. Buddy smiled. I do trust that. If I didn't, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I'll be up front and right to the point. This job requires breaking a few laws. So if you aren't okay with that, we can stop right here. Roger answered Buddy. Well, generally, I don't have a problem with break, breaking a few rules, but, like, I don't know what kind of laws we're talking about. I mean, I want to be able to look at myself in the mirror at night. But he said, well, no crimes against humanity or any stuff like that. Just traffic laws, mostly. Tiny laughed. But he said, no, seriously, we're going to be moving a half a dozen of crates of M16s from upstate to over the line in southern Vermont. I just want to make sure that you're aware. The laws about transporting over state lines come with some pretty heavy penalties. Roger looked at Buddy. M16s? Sweet. Boy, I'd sure love to get my hands on one for myself. Buddy looked at Hammer. Hammer nodded. Well, Buddy said, we might have an extra one from our cut of the lot. We can throw it in as a bonus if all goes well. Roger asked in a serious tone. And we don't have to kill anyone. Buddy answered, that's always our hope and our goal going in. Hammer interjected, should go pretty smooth. We aren't stealing the rifles. We're taking delivery of them from a contact up at Fort Drum. A guy that, Buddy interrupted. Let's leave the details off the table for now. He looked at Hammer. Hammer nodded. Then Buddy said, Pretty routine run, bro. You drive the van upstate. I'll ride with you. Hammer and Tiny will ride their bikes up. They hang back a mile or so behind us for support and interference if needed. Mostly for the ride from the pickup to where we dropped the rifles off in Vermont. Again, pretty routine. Pickups at 10 p.m., all goes as planned. We're back here before the sun comes up. Roger nodded. Sounds good. Count me in. Buddy smiled and slapped him on the back. Great, he said. 
it's it'll be great to have you with us